there will be around 100 to 110 ASCII sessions are there in the app, which you have to go through at least twice before the exam. These are the must before the exam. If you go through this, you will definitely go pass out the exam very easily. Hello, good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Kishan Tarkapalli. Yeah, I'm a, I am I did my DNB orthopedics from Medical Trust Hospital, Cochin, and I am presently uh, working as a senior resident in ESA Medical College, Hyderabad. And I recently passed out uh, DNB orthopedics practical in the June, se January session, which was conducted. And I secured 191 marks. So, Actually, numbers don't matter, but uh, we ultimately have to pass. So I'm here to share my experiences and how I prepared for the exam using conceptual orthopedics and other material. And I'm going to share you the details, how I went through the exam and how was the exam conducted and how was the total pattern and how was the things. Yeah, first of all, everybody knows that it was a uh, OSCE session and clinical case examination, which was around 300 marks, which is around 300 marks. And the OSCE pattern is around 100, 100 marks and the clinical case examinations, two cases will be there and which will be carrying 50 marks each. And the rest of the stations are viva wise around 40 marks and the uh, 60 marks and the ward rounds will be around 40 marks. Yeah, in the last and uh, exam is on Saturday now, so everybody will be preparing as of uh, everybody we are well prepared. So I'll be sharing my experiences during my last three to four days, what I did to go get through the exam. Yeah, everybody till now has in the conceptual orthopedics members, everybody have maybe have completed all the conceptual OSCE sessions, OSCE sessions which are daily going on now and which are already present previously. So there will be around 100 to 110 OSCE sessions are there in the app, which you have to go through at least twice before the exam. These are the must before the exam. If you go through this, you will definitely go pass out the exam very easily. So I, during, uh, before my exam, I did, I completed my videos around two times and one before the exam, so almost three times. So it was very easy for me during the exam. So the OSCE session will be from 9 to 10.30, almost around one, one and a half hour. And each, each session, each question carries around five marks, which will be around four minutes. So if you prepared well, the four minutes will be very, yeah, it will be more than enough. Some people will think four minutes will not be enough, but it's more than enough if you correctly prepare for the exam. Yeah. And mostly I prepared, I, when I wrote the exam, I, I thought uh, after first 10 questions, I almost got nine to 10 questions, nine questions, right? And the next five to six questions, and the next 10, I almost got six to seven questions, right? I all 15 questions, I thought after the exam, I thought I could make 15 questions. So I thought in the first, after in the first session of the OSCE, I thought I will get through the exam. It's all because of this conceptual orthopedics, which helped me build my confidence before the exam itself. And I got through this. So basically in this three, uh, three days before the exam, what you have to do is to go through the OSCE videos and whatever notes you have prepared with this OSCE videos and all those things. Yeah. Generally, most of the questions, generally the starting will be the mostly spine questions will be there initially two to three questions. And after that, uh, tumor based questions are, will be two to three and pediatrics two questions. And after that, arthroplasty one or two, spine uh, arthroscopy one or two, and the some gate videos and some instruments will be there like God and well tongue, crutch well tongue. Those are repeatedly like these God and well tongues and crutch well tongues are repeatedly, alternatively they are asking in every session. So you have to see once before the exam day, before the exam, not to get confused between the two. And the tumor, in the tumor part, mostly they are asking GCT, osteochondroma, 
osteosarcoma these these has to be seen before the exams before one day or two days before the exam you have to revise all these topics once again and in the fine session you have to go through these tuli sir videos and uh, srinivas uh, srinivas mulya sir videos those are extremely useful every time they are asking and they were getting almost two to three questions from the fine spine mostly they'll be asking about tb spine one question is every time they are asking about tb spine you just have to see these videos once again before the exam at least how the tb spine mri and those questions related questions you have to go through once because uh, every time these from the last three sessions mostly about tb spine and spondylodiscitis these questions are frequently being repeated and these mris and everything is been in the app you can go through the app before the exam and coming to the pediatric session the fine dr fine kotekar sir uh, videos are more than enough if you go through those videos uh, those will be very good and you will be enough the and anything more extra is not needed and coming to arthroplasty not major tough questions are being asked in the last two three sessions and what kind of arthroplasty is that and what are the generations and these sort of easy questions are being asked and the and the nerve examination uh, clean, uh, nerve examination part is very confusing you have to go through those tests and all those things before the exam once day one day before the exam or two days before the exam those are uh, one to two questions are frequently being asked from this and you have to go through all those things and come apart from those gate videos and which are there in the app you can go through that and three uh, clinical uh, clinical science by dr gopakumar sir uh, clinical science of upper limb lower limb and spine these are the must you have to go through these three videos two days at least two days before the exam or day before the exam those are extremely useful you will have an edge there of remaining uh, people who are there in the exam because last time they have asked hoffman sign uh, uh, many of my Uh, examination we are about 10 people nobody of them are not able to get through that uh, these are the things you have to revise before the exam those three topics by gopakumar sir are ex extremely useful uh, you have to get uh, go through this compulsory before the exam like knee examination latch and pivot shift test anterior draw test these knee signs are frequently being repeat repeatedly being asked you should not forget about this some five to six topics like spine uh, tumors pediatric orthopedics and uh, oski sign uh, clinical signs upper limb lower limb and spine by dr gopakumar sir and some other like which is there like nerve examination these are very confusing you have to go through once before the examination and coming to after uh, this uh, if you go through this all these videos you will be easily cracking the exam and you will get through the exam this one hour one and a half hour is the deciding factor we if we go through this oski session confidently if you if you think you are making 12 to 14 12 to 13 questions if you feel after the oski pattern of after the oski exam if you feel 12 to 13 questions are okay with you if you got them right you are you have passed the practical examination that is what i feel and that is most of my colleagues are to told the colleagues also told that yeah, they have made 12 to 13 questions and after that uh, those after the results you can see your marks i thought i i had made 14 to 15 questions correct and my score is around 19 in uh, my score is 191 and and uh, after this you will be having a case based discussion uh, two cases will be there 50 marks each and there will be yeah two cases two long cases like uh, i had a genu valgum and one malunited distal radius uh, with uh, now median nerve compression yeah basically they will give you 15 minutes of time for examination and 15 minutes for discussion generally if you go through there uh, the discussion will be like uh, to present a short history and they'll asking you the questions regarding that no case uh, presentation like a normal scenario here because the time is very less you have to go through very fast you are the major or the, the important findings you have to tell and 
you have to summarize the entire thing and the, the discussion will go on no case presentation as of now in my uh, as of in many centers uh, my friends and my center also there is no this case discussion two course, two sessions two cases it will be finished in one hour of time half an hour half an hour for each case and it will be finished in less than one hour only more in 45 minutes of time and these are the major things oski and case this case based discussions are the two things which will de determine whether you passed or not and after that in the afternoon session there will be oski uh, viva voice and there will be ward rounds and the ward round there will they will keep four of the patients whatever they are in your center uh, cases they will keep you like if there is a fracture neck of femur they will keep the patient and they will ask you about the skin traction treatment and these are the things they will ask there is an it fracture uh, they will ask about the skin traction if there is a femur they will ask about the skeletal traction if there is a calcaneum fracture they will ask about the classification and treatment part and these are the normal discussions we will get through that easily not to worry about this uh, ward rounds and viva in the viva session there will be instruments processes x-rays and uh, surgical procedures which we can manage it because uh, we don't have to go extensively prepared and uh, neglect these oski sessions your main focus should be on the oski these instruments and x-rays we can at least tell the name of the instrument and some questions on that we'll get through they'll give the half half of the marks in that but mainly focus on the oski session in these three to four days of time left what is there and what uh, what I have done is last three to four days I just read OSCE, nothing, no case discussion, no case based discussion, no instruments, nothing. I just read OSCE and go through all those OSCE videos, uh, clinical signs of upper limb, lower limb, and spine, and and spine videos by Dr. Uh, Tuli sir and uh, Vivek Verma sir tumors. These are more than enough. In the last three to four days and some instruments which has to be seen some may be asked in the exam like crutchfield tongue gordon well tongue sometimes they are asking uh, some spine instruments you can get go through those all those in a couple uh, in a one day and go major part is to go through this conceptual ask videos those are more than enough and i i mostly prefer i tell you all people to read this OSCE videos before the examination because they are the most determining factor. Once you think you got, you got 12 to 14 questions right, you will get through the exam. And all the videos, this conceptual orthopedics is very good. And most of the questions directly or indirectly are from these 110 videos. Those are extremely helpful. If you complete it a couple of times till now, you go, you revise them, you'll get through the exam. As, uh, as they, I was thanking Dr. Apur Mara and I, I, we lost Dr. Gopakumar, sir. I we deeply yes, he regret for that. And okay, we miss him in this conceptual orthopedics. Hope his videos helpful, will be helpful for many students upcoming also. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on this platform. Thank you very much.